Several weeks ago I took the time to set up these power bars here and mount them on the wall and the bottom one has quit. And it's kind of annoying because this is the one that the computer plugs into and the lamp over there and the amplifier and all that stuff doesn't reach any other outlets. So I am not able to use any of that equipment now that this has failed. So let's get this off of here and see if we can find out what went wrong. Well, I thought this would be relatively easy. There we go. Okay. So, I don't see any obvious sign of failure anywhere. There's no burning or discoloration or melting or anything like that. The circuit breaker reset does not work, the light does not come on, and there's no power to the outlets. And inherently there's seemingly no screws on here. So, I'm not sure if this will come apart or not. So I had my uh, I got to buy the things for that Dremel because I could use that to slice this open. Let's see if it seems like it should snap apart. If not, I'll have to wait for the tools. Yeah, yeah it looks like it'll come apart pretty okay. Oh yeah, it'll come apart just fine. Now, what happened here is I, for a very long time, have plugged a heater into this power bar and I would turn the heater on and off with this bar because the heater does not have a switch on it. Now, this is rated for 15 amps, so was the outlet. Now, when this quit, the particular day that it quit, I had the heater and the computer on, both plugged into this power bar, which is a use case that very, very seldom ever shows up, if ever. I'm not sure I've ever done that. So I tend to think maybe I put too much power through here, but 15 amps is the capacity of the outlet itself, which has other things connected to it as well. And I don't think the heater plus the computer equals 15 amps. The whole circuit breaker should have gone out if that was the case. So I'm not really sure what to expect as far as the failure of this unit goes. So looking inside here, not really seeing anything obvious. Nothing looks melted on the board. Thing looks overheated. Nothing, no melted wires, no charred spots. Everything looks to be totally fine. I suspect that module right there is a thermal overload. So I want to get a reading of that. Perhaps that's a thermal overload. I'm not totally certain, but I want to take a read reading of that and I guess we could take a reading of the switch is always a good thing to look at it's really kind of odd it doesn't seem like it should have quit this is all bent over I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like that or not you can see how this is not really a good protector is this even a yeah, it is a surge suppressor, 400 volts. You can see this isn't really a good one. I mean, all it's got is a couple of these. Um, I forget exactly what these are called at the moment, but it doesn't have a lot of protection on it at all, really. So this is one reason why you, you don't want to buy cheap uh, protectors. All right, the Digitan multimeter is set up. Let's see if we have any continuity over that one component here which looks like it's going to go from here to here. Yeah nothing
nothing. Make sure I'm on the right uh, connection here. Oh, it's this one. Yeah, no, that was the right one. This one and this one here. Nothing. So that component. There's some writing on it. Let's see if I can use my fancy new scissors here to cut this tape. And let's see, what does it say? Looking for like a temperature number or something to see if maybe it's a thermal cut off. I don't really see anything on there. So let's see, is our switch any good? The switch should be in the on position now. Which is good. The cord is good, which I would expect. So that component appears to have failed. It's got some resistance reading across these other things. That appears to be okay. This is, is that a capacitor? Looks like it's going to be a capacitor. So, all right. So we have a failure within this component, whatever that may be. I think it's some kind of a thermal overload which means this was getting pretty hot and it was, not, I don't know, it wasn't at 15 amps, I know that much because the outlet, I mean, how can we take 15 amps? If it was drawing 15 amps, the circuit breaker would have started complaining. And I know that uh, this wasn't getting all 15 amps because there's two other power bars alone plugged into that outlet plus a modem and uh, two modems actually so I'm not really sure why this failed but you know whatever so what we can do just to make this work is we can just cut the circuit board out and take this wire and put it well, after we answer the phone, we can do that. Okay, let's see if we can get through the rest of the video without the phone ringing. At least that time it wasn't spam. Half the time it's a stinking spam. Okay. So, what we're going to do here, just so that this thing isn't totally worthless, we're going to take this off and this will take off probably not bend the whole thing but let's see here okay and that can just go back in place like this okay and then what I'll do here, hopefully this is long enough, I'll take this off 
and we'll connect, oh nice, it will be long enough. We'll connect this. Oh man, that's not a good fit. Let's hope that we get away with this one pretty easily. Nah, that's not a good enough fit to work with. Um, maybe I can make it be a good fit. Now it's too good of a fit. There we go. Okay, that's on there plenty secure. Now we'll just drop that back in. And then the other side will go on here. So now, it'll just give me straight power. No surge of protection. Not that there really wasn't much of any to speak of before. But, uh, there's that. So this should theoretically work now. Of course, this will not be useful in this application because I need the surge protection, but there's plenty of cases where I can make use of just a regular power bar um, without surge protection, for instance, during Christmas time. So, at least this makes this not worthless. And then this is just, I don't know if this, well, how many microfarads is the capacitor. Not really sure, it doesn't say. Um, that's not really worth too much. No, anything super interesting on that board so that's that we'll just put it back together like that and it should work again Okay, so that's back together. Now let's verify our work here with the uh, multimeter. So if we go onto the high side, we should get continuity at every high side and nowhere else. Okay, I'll check the low side. Okay, so you, oh actually that, that may be by design. Okay, so it only cuts off the hot which makes sense. Check the grounding. Okay, so this is good and working again. It's not surge protecting anymore. So ultimately I'm gonna have to get a new bar for over here. But at least in the meanwhile, until I get that new bar, Put this back in place 
wouldn't be a video without a tripod freak show. At least for now I can put this back in place and plug in the equipment. And for now what I'll do is I'll just plug this power bar into this other one which is a protector and it's supposedly still working. And my light just came on. I'm just going to check all the outlets real quick. The light. And they're all working. So that's good. Now I can plug in everything else. And I'll have to get a new uh, another ISO bar. Wish those things weren't so daggone expensive, but sometimes you have to pay to get something that's good quality. And when it comes to electrical things like this, you usually always do. Okay, I think that was everything. The computer, or the monitor, the computer, the amplifier, and the light. Uh, yeah, that was all. Okay. Oh, and then sometimes I had this air filter plugged in as well. Um, that's not as important. Because I don't use this too often because it's too loud, but there's that. Okay, that's working for now. And I'll have to replace that eventually. But the design of that thing is a very good example of why I don't like the plastic power bars because I'm, I'm speculating that it was a heat related failure. If this thermal protection didn't work or it heated up in a different area where the thermal protection wasn't, then there's nothing preventing those hot metal terminals from melting that plastic and causing a problem. So that's really exactly why I don't like plastic power bars. Fortunately this one failed safely, but there's no saying that's going to be the case every time.